This next podcast covers section 16.2 and oh, 16.3 and 4, the auto ionization of water and how you can use that as a basis for our pH scale. So if you were Superman and you were stuck face deep into water and you had superhuman vision, about every two billion molecules or so, a molecule of hydronium and hydroxide would come swimming by your eyeballs. That's because water molecules, when they see each other, can auto-ionize. That means one will give away a hydrogen, the other will accept it. One will act as a base, and the other will act as an acid. But it doesn't happen very often, because as I said, it's about one in every few billion molecules that swim by you. Now you can write an equilibrium for that expression, and notice that again, there's always that conflict in chemistry. Sometimes instead of H3O, there's an H there, but it means the same thing. There's a special equilibrium expression that can describe this auto-ionization of water. And you notice it has no denominator because liquid water was on the left-hand side, and of course we omit solids and liquids from equilibrium expressions. So that, the reason for that then is, um, or the reason why it has its own ion product constant symbol is that this is specifically just for water. And notice that we have to specify the temperatures are at 25 degrees Celsius because of course you change the temperature and equilibrium constant will change. And it's been experimentally proved that this ionization constant for water or ion product constant is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, a very, very tiny number. But hopefully that number 14 hmm, looks a little familiar to you. So sample exercise 16.4 says that if you have pure water, your concentrations of hydroxide and hydrogen, also called hydronium, should be equal to each other. You'll let those concentrations equal x, and therefore x squared should equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. When you solve for x, you can find that in pure water, which is neutral, the hydrogen ion concentration, also called hydronium, is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 and molar, and so is the hydroxide ion concentration. Now if you look very carefully down here, there's a typo on the practice exercises uh, A, B, and C. I hope you can see B there. What we do know is that if you have more hydrogen ions in concentration, then that solution will be acidic. But if hydroxide ions in uh, the solution are dominating, then that solution will be basic. The problem is these are negative exponents. So remember, the smaller the magnitude of a negative exponent, the greater the magnitude of that number. So for example, if they both have to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14 when multiplied, it should be clear to you that when hydrogen ion is something times 10 to the negative 9th, then the hydroxide ion is probably something times 10 to the negative 5. A larger number when hydroxides dominate. That's why answer A is basic. Uh, B is clearly a typo. If you go to sample exercise 16.4 in the book, you'll find that it is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And C, if the hydroxide ion is really tiny, something times 10 to the minus 13th, that means the hydrogen or hydronium must be something quite larger, 10 to the minus 1 or 10 to the minus 2, and therefore it must dominate, that must be an acidic solution. So when acids are dom or when hydroxides are dominating, the solutions are basic. When the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium is dominating, the solutions are acidic. Now you can very easily calculate hydronium ion or hydrogen ion from hydroxide and vice versa. So this particular assumption though on these problems is that we're assuming that these are strong acids or bases. We'll talk about the weak acid and weak base equilibria in a future problem. If your hydroxide ion is 0.01, convert to scientific notation, 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Therefore, if I simply divide 1 times 10 to the negative 14 by the concentration given, 1 times 10 to the minus 2 or 0.01 molar, I can see very quickly without even touching a calculator that the hydrogen or hydronium is 1 times 10 to the minus 12. On question B, hydroxide is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 9. Well, now you can't do it in your head, but the process is still the same. Take 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divide it by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 9, and we get the hydrogen ion concentration.
So this number, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, is one way that you can use to find hydrogen or hydroxide ion concentrations, assuming you know one or the other. Now, people don't like, or their brains don't like, things that are to negative exponents. And the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. Remember, logarithmic scales are used to express very large or very small numbers, in this case, very small concentrations. So it stands for the power of the hydrogen or the power of the hydronium ion, but those powers are always negative. So they said, let's make this in a scale that's easier for people's brain to understand, and we're going to place a negative sign in front of the log of the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration, and that will make my pH values positive numbers. And we're going to base it on the hydronium ion concentration. As you can see, there's also a pOH scale. Let's focus on pH. <coughs> so the ion product constant for water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. It equals the hydronium times hydroxide. As one increases, the other must decrease. And since in pure water they equal each other, it should be clear that in pure water, hydronium is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. If you take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 7, you get 7. A very familiar term to you when you understand, as you remember from earlier classes, that neutral pH is 7.0. So as designated in the chart below, if the hydrogen ion concentration is something greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 7, then you're acidic. Or that would be if the pH is less than 7. Remember, it's a positive of a negative exponent. Basic solutions would be something greater than 7 on the pH scale. Or another way to say that is that their hydroxide ion is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 7. You'll get the hang of it if it's a little rusty. So an acid has a higher hydronium ion concentration than pure water, so its pH would be less than 7. A base has a lower hydronium ion concentration, or more hydroxide, and therefore its pH is greater than 7. Here, of course, and it's probably much more readily easy to understand, or easy to understand when you look at this chart here. We use the red hot colors to stand for uh, acidic. We go to cool greens and blues when we're talking about the basic zone of the pH scale. Recognize, of course, that the pH scale could actually be an open-ended scale. We typically say that it varies from 0 to 14. But there are some super fun cleanup sites that have gotten so acidic that their pH values will be negative. And that we'll discuss as we talk about uh, acid hydrolysis later on in the chapter or the next chapter. But as you scan down these common substances, if hydrogen or hydronium is 10 to the minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, then pH is 1, 2, or 3. And notice, interestingly enough, that the hydroxide ions are 10 to the minus 13th if hydrogen is 10 to the minus 1 or 10 to the minus 12 if hydrogen is 10 to the minus 2, and so on. So you can even calculate a pOH, take a negative log of 10 to the minus 14, and you have 14. And what's so cool as you travel down the chart is that the sum of the pH plus the pOH is, of course, you guessed it, 14. So we're going to have another way to be able to use pH and pOH values and if someone gives you hydronium ion concentration or hydrogen ion concentration, let's start with one you could do in your head. If it's 1 times 10 to the minus 12, then a negative of negative 12 is 12. <coughs> Notice that because 1.0 times 10 to the minus 12 had two significant figures, they take the pH out to two places to the right. We'll need to discuss that a bit more. The second solution in a previous problem you couldn't do in your head, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6 molar, but I could take the negative log of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6, and you'll find out it's a little less than 6, which is a good way to estimate. It needed to be somewhere between 5 and 6. It's 5.25. Make sure you know how to operate your calculator. Most of the TI-80-whatevers allow you to go directly 
negative log 5.6 second exponent negative 6. Very important at this point. Not to use the little caret key, not to use times 10. Any of that will make all your pH values off by a factor of 10. Not a good thing. Okay, so that's how you get pH from um, hydrogen ion. You can go backwards by taking what we call an anti-log. On your calculator, that would be shift or second log, and the only thing you have to remember is to put in a negative sign in front of the pH. So you would take the anti-log is 10 to the negative 3.76, and you would hit enter and find out that your hydrogen must have been something around 10 to the minus 4, which makes sense because that's the pH somewhere around 4. So make sure you know how your calculator works or if you borrow one that you're using the correct syntax. It matters on these problems quite a bit. There's other pH scales like the pOH scale and that would be an example of if you take the negative log of the hydroxide ion. You can also have uh, and we'll do this later on in another chapter, you can take the negative log of the Kw, the ionization constant for water, ion product constant, and if hydronium times hydroxide equals this ion product constant for water, and then the log of hydronium, negative log of hydronium plus a negative log of hydroxide should equal the negative log of the ion product constant. Or, a cool way to say that is pH plus pOH equals 14, which we just saw on a previous slide. So that will take you through the basics of simple pH problems. Notice that we use pH paper or litmus paper. pH paper is a paper that's been soaked in a variety of solutions that are indicators, so it will change color across the 0 to 14 normal range of the pH scale. Uh, litmus paper is only good for pH above 8. That'll be, um, uh, sorry, uh, notice that it says there's red and blue paper. We've only ever actually used neutral litmus. If it goes kind of a reddish color, pink reddish, then you know it's acidic. If it goes sort of bluish, you know it's um, alkaline. But there's also red litmus paper which turns blue in a base, or blue litmus paper which turns red in a base. Or we can use any of the indicators you've seen in the past, phenothaline or bone thyme all blue. For more accurate measurements, we'll be using our probeware to get um, the pH with a pH meter. And pH meters actually measure conductivity. So if there's more ions in solution, then you'll get greater conductivity. And that can be calibrated to certain concentrations. So we'll be doing that as well. We'll stop here at strong acids. Please note from the assignment sheet given to you by your teacher, you'll have a variety of problems on different worksheets that relate to these basic pH problems.